Hello friends, we were discussing the poem Christopher by S.T. Coleridge and we are done with part 1 and in this video I'll cover part 2 of this poem so without wasting time let's get began. It's a long poem right so stay tuned of, uh, with the video and watch till the end. So it goes like this part 2. Each matin bell the baron said knell us, knell us back to uh, world of death these words are real line first said when he rose and found his lady dead and these words are real line will say many a morn to his dying day and hence the custom and law began that still at down the sar uh, sac Christian, Sir Christian, who daily pulls the heavy bell five and forty beds must tell between each stroke a warning uh, knell which not a soul can choose but hear from the brasa head to Windermere. Right, so they were at the castle and it was morning. And Sir Leoline, the father of Christabel, has awakened now. Right, it was a morning bell. And Baron Sir Leoline, he was awake and he just met a uh, Caroline. Right. He just nulls back right and he just just uh, remembers the death of his wife right these words he said that when he rose and found the lady's death his dead wife right and he just um he just mourn about that right and it was a morning day for him and uh, so uh, here sacristan refers to sexton of the parish church right and uh, dolly balls referred to two times the heavy bell they have rung it was morning he is a falcon he remember recollect the memories of his dying wife and uh, right and from prasa head to windermere windermere it's the name of lake he just remember this place as well and send brassy who is brassy here brassy here is a poet or a singer right and another character has been introduced there he is also a poet at the court of sir leo line right sad said brassy the bard the poet bard mean poet right so let it know and let the drowsy sacristan still count as loudly as he can and there is no lack of such ivy as well fill up the space between in langdale pike and which which is lair the dungeon girl so foully rent with ropes of rock pulse of air three sinful three sinful saxon ghosts are and to all give back one after other the death not to their living brother and oft to by null of fun of fanded just as their one two three is ended the devil smoke the doleful tell with a merry peal from brocade right so the bar the poet brassy right he just um he just came to sir leo line right and uh, and and uh, he's just uh, so he fill up the space between and, uh, and he remind of the places two places have been mentioned there two mountains langdale pike right and which is lair and then uh, and then 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 so these are the three uh, parish three places right three sinful uh, places the dirgen girl the land langdale pike and uh, which is lair right so this is are just uh, parish these places have been parish and he just remind him of the eat right three sinful sexton ghost are pent and um, and the dead not to her to their living brother so sexton who is a sexton so sexton is the one who rang the bell at the church right and uh, so it was morning he rang the bell 
for the morning and uh, Brassy he just came to to the service of Sir Leol uh, right and then uh, what happens next the air is still through mist and cloud that Mary Pell comes ringing loud and Geraldine shakes her uh, off her treat and rises lightly from bed and um, as it was morning and the crust of ball she just sleep and Geraldine she just wake up and just uh, shake off the uh, crust of ball to um, awaken her right and then puts on her silken vestments white and uh, tricks her hair in lovely plight and nothing doubting of her spell awaken the lady Christabel and she just put on her clothes or garments and then she awakened the Christabel and sleep you sweet lady Christabel I trust that you have rested well and she wished that it was a good night for Christabel and she slept very well at night right and um, Christabel awoke and spied the same who laid down by her side or rather say the same womb uh, she raised up beneath the old uh, oak tree and Christopher awakened and she got some different feelings right as uh, Geraldine pulled a spell on her last night and she awake up that and she wondered whether the Geraldine was she the lady whom she had um she had help in last night from the forest from the oak tree right never yet yet more fair and she she seems more fair more beautiful right for she bill like had drunk and deep of all the blessedness of sleep and while she spake her looks her uh, yeah, such gentle thankfulness declare that so it seemed her girdle vast grew tight beneath her wearing brass sure i have seen uh, said christabel no heaven be praised if all be well right and she says that the girl dying she seems more pleasant more fairer and beautiful and uh, and 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 uh, and she's back her looks her air gentleness uh, and gentle thankfulness declare and uh, so uh, just uh, sure i have a sin said christopher what sin uh, she has uh, committed she felt like guilty of doubting on Geraldine's character last night right and after <laughs> that spell she felt like it was uh, her sin uh, her mistake or mm, she committed a mistake or a sin to doubt girl dance right it was it was just a uh, power of that spell which makes her feel so and in low faltering tone yet sweet did she uh, the lofty lady greet with such perplexity of mind and dreams to lovely live behind right faltering means regretting she regret on her doubting carol dance character uh, the night before so quickly she rose and quickly array her maiden limbs and uh, having prayed that he that he who on the cross did crown might wash away her sins unknown she forth uh, with led fair girl time to meet her uh, sire sir leoline right and then she dressed up bright and then uh, uh, and then have prayed to god he refers to god and cross did gone refers to crucifixion of jesus right jesus christ and then she prayed and then she led carol Tan to sir leo line to me tried to introduce her to sir leo line her father and then christopher the lovely mate refers to christopher the lovely mat and the lady tall tall lady the grand lady refers to carol Tan, are passing both passing both into the hall and passing on through the pa pageant room enter the baron's presence room right 
Page and groom refer to servant passing the servants and then the entered into room of uh, Sir Leoline and the Baron rose and while he pressed his gentle daughters to his breast with cheerful one uh, wonder in his eyes and the lady Geraldine espies and gave such welcome to Sam might be seen to bright to them right a dam right so he just very warmly welcome them right and just um uh, press just hug his uh, daughter right very warmly and lovingly with affection and krista garaldine she just amazed this sight right and but when he heard the lady's tale and when she told her father's name and then uh, Christopal told the story how she heard this uh, Caroline, and Caroline introduced herself and told her father's name. And then Leoline mm, was he just just uh, felt that he know her father right when she told uh, of her father and real line he he says that oh i knew your father he was an old friend of mine we see in these lines right who who was the father of uh carl dine we'll see in these lines right why wake early your line so pal murmuring over the name again lord raw roland lord roland the vox of tyran main Alas, they had been friends in youth and whispering tongues can poison truth and constantly lives in the realms above and life is honey and youth is van. So he just he just regret upon the past that they were used to be good friends, right? And the father of uh, Geraldine, uh, who is Lord Roland and uh, Sir Leoline, they used to be good friends, but. Uh, but uh, their friendship has been broken due to certain causes, right? Leoline friend. And then he says that it constantly lives in realm above. And he says that life is thorny, life is complex, and youth is when that youthness it never lasts. And now we are all and remember the youthful days when they used to be friends and further he said and to the world with one we love doth work like madness in brand and thus it chance as i uh, as i divine with roland and sir leoline each backwards of high distance insult to his heart best brothers they parted never to meet again never either found another to free the hollow heart from panting stood all of the scars remaining like cliffs which had been rent asunder done the dreary sea now flows between but neither had nor frost nor thunder shall wholly do away i ween the marks of that which once had been right and he just regret and lament upon the past oh how beautiful days they were in their youth when they were used to be friends but uh, they didn't last uh, longer and they were parted and they broke their friendship due to certain causes right and if you love someone and that person betrays you it makes you mad right and then he says that uh, here in this words he just rem uh, he just he just uh, uh, a portal there depart right never be found again and then hollow heart the scars right the wounds and the suffering and all of these this emotional background asunder breakdown and this suppression and all of these so next uh, sir leoline say leoline a moment space stood gazing on the damsel face and youthful lord of theory man came back upon his heart again he look at Geraldine again and just he remind again of uh, her father they were used to be friends right or oh, then the parent forget his age his noble heart swell high with rage he swear by the wounds in Jesus sight he would proclaim it far and wide with 
Trump and solemn heraldry heraldry that they who thus had wronged the dam were best supported in family and if they dare deny the same my herald shall appoint a week and let the recreant traitors seek my thorny cord that were and then i may dislodge their reptile souls from the bodies and forms of men he spake his eyes in lighting rolls for the lady was worthlessly seized and he ned in a beautiful lady and child of his friend right he just now he had got some realization and he was just intended to help Geraldine right and uh, he just uh, uh, on these lines you can see that 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 who does had wrong the dam those who just abducted this uh, dam this carol time he just uh, he just uh, give her justice or just uh, uh, return back her to her home and build good relation uh, with he uh, with his friend the father of carol time it was a chance for him to rebuild their friendship again right reptile souls refer to bad souls and he just uh, take to he just just uh, avenge he just want to avenge upon the reptile souls in the bad souls who has abducted her right and then uh, for the lady means for the girl dying was ruthless sees who has uh, the man who has ruthlessly sees her right they should be punished and then and now the tears were on his face and fondly in arms he took right and now he felt remorse regret and he and tears come to his eye and he just uh, uh embrace uh, uh Geraldine in his arms and fair Geraldine who meet the embrace and prolong prolong me long time it with a joyous look he look at her with a joyous look prolong for a longer time and which uh, when she viewed a vision fell upon the soul of christopher again uh, christopher got a vision or right a vision or some kind of insight into by seeing their sight and the vision of fear she got some fear the touch and pain when girl died touch uh, her she felt the pain right again the, this was the second time she spelt on her right the vision of fear the touch and the pain and she shrunk and shudder and saw again right this crustable she shrunk and shudder the second time spell and ah who is me was it for the and gentle mad crystal such sights to see and she she got this uh, uh side that uh how how cheerfully her father uh interact with carol dine right again she saw that bosom old again she felt that bosom cold and drew in her penny breath with the hissing sound where at the night ran wildly round and nothing saw nothing saw but uh his own sweet mate with eyes upraised as one that pray the touch the sight had passed away and uh, in its stead that vision blessed uh, which comforted her after rest and while in lady's arm she lay had put a ruptures in her breast and on her lips and over her eyes spread smiles like light again she saw the uh, carol dine right saw that bosoms old means bosoms heart of her father she got a vision a strange kind of vision or insight right and then again she was suspicious about carol dine right drew in her breath and hissing sound and then and then then what actually happens the touch the sight had passed away and uh, when current i'll touch her again 
uh, put a spell on her again touch her while in the lady's arms she lay and put a rupture in her breast she just again remember the night before uh, uh, Geraldine put a spell on her that while in lady's arms she lay means she slept with uh, her last night and put a rupture in her breast on on her lips and over her ears and then spread smiles like light and then with new surprise what else then uh, my beloved child the baron said his daughter smiled made answer uh, all will yet be well i mean she had no power to tell aught else she might be uh, she was the spell mighty was the spell so leoline said that oh my child what bothers you right why why you are silent and uh, is some is everything okay and she said that all will yet be well right uh, everything is good and fine right because she was under uh, a spell right so mighty was this spell and yet he yet he who saw his uh, yet he who saw this Geraldine had deemed her sure a thing divine such sorrow with uh, such grace she planned it as if she feared as if she feared uh, she had offended sweet Christopher that gentle maid and with such lovely tones she prayed she might be sent without delay home to her father's mansion and then uh, she saw Geraldine and again got suspicious of her right and then uh, she demanded she wished that uh, 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 Geraldine should return to her father's home right and uh, and then uh, to her father's mansion father home mansion is home right name is no and then leoline say no Sh nay no nay by my soul said leoline ho oh, brassy singer right the part the charge with the uh, thine go thou with sweet music and loud and took two steeds steeds are the horses two horses two steeds with the trapping proud and take the youth warm you loves the best uh, to bear thy harp musical instrument and lean thy song and clothe you both in solemn vest and over the mountain says along and then he sent brassy away as a messenger to the father of Geraldine to take the message that his daughter is uh, with uh, sir leo line she is safe and uh, he just want to rebuild the connection the friendship again right so he sent the part the singer brassy right and then lest wandering fog that are abroad detained you on the valley broad and uh, and when he has crossed the earth, uh, earthing flood earthing flood my merry but he has he has up corin more through halligard wood and reaches soon that castle good which stands and threatens scotland's west Right, he just goes through this mountain region, right, and uh, so that he just he just be careful not to be captured by the fog, uh, the wandering fog there, right, and then he just crossed the earthing means earthing is the name of river, right, river flood, and then he make haste, he haste, and uh, drive uh, fastly through the woods hellgard woods right the forest and to reach to scotland's west and then bard brassy bard brassy your horses are fleet ye must ride up the hall uh, your music so sweet more loud than the horses echoing feet and loud and loud to lord roll and call thy daughter is safe in langdale hall right again as i already told you 
to brassy to take the message that um, uh, the Geraldine is safe right your daughter is safe in Langdale Hall Langdale Hall refers to castle of Leoline and then said that the beautiful daughter is safe and free sir Leoline greets thee with the me and he bids thee come without delay with all thy numerous array and take thy lovely daughter home right so he just want uh, father of uh, Geraldine Roland to to just came to Leoline uh, build the friendship again took uh, his daughter home away and then he will meet thee on the way with all his numerous array white with their panting palfrey's frame palfrey you know palfrey uh, horse right so the bard brassy he just uh, uh, ride the horse very fast right and the horse was pant panting right breathless it was as it was, uh, was right very hard and by mine hour i will say that uh, i repent me of the day when i spoke words of fierce distant so he just um leo lion repent on that day when he said some harsh words to ronald his friend and uh, they quit friendship he just uh, uh, remorse regret lament on that day right to ronald the vox of tire man for since that evil hour had uh, flown many a summer suns had shone and never found a friend again and he's just um admit that he never found a friend like uh, ronald again right and the lady fell and clasped uh, his um, niece her face appraised her face appraised her eyes overflowing and brassy replied with faltering voice his gracious hall on all bestowing thy words thy sire of christabel are sweeter than my harp can tell so the lady the Chris, the girl died right she she fell she uh, again feeling weak right gulps to his knees uh, fell and knees uh, to the knees of Leo line right her face up uh, raised and her eyes overflowing and uh, the brassy the poet he replied with faltering a voice means with shame voice right his gracious hall on best of wing the sire of Christopher are sweeter than uh, my harp can tell and then again um, the day <coughs> so the day my journeys should not be so strange a dream had come to me that i had vowed that music loud to clear to wood that uh, thing unblessed one by a vision in my rest so brassy had told that he got a vision right he had a vision a dream right and a very uh, terrific and uh, what we say a fearful uh, dream that herald that give a hint about something is going to bad right he just won so he was one in his dream <coughs> and he says that he explained his dream in these words for in my sleep i saw that dove that gentle bird warm thou dost love and call um, called by thy own daughter's name leoline i saw the same as leo line love his daughter christopher very very much and she just uh, he just call her by the name of dove right and in 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 his dream the bird the brace he saw a dream and in his dream he saw a dove right the gentle bird and um, and then next what happens fluttering and uh, altering uttering fluttering and uttering fearful moan among the green herbs in the forest lawn which uh, when i saw and when i heard i um, i wonder what might all uh, what might ail the bird for nothing near uh, it could i see save the grass green herbs under the old tree and in his dream he saw a uh, dove right which was fearful and it was mourning and uh, and 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 he heard that wonder what might 
all the bird means all a disease or worry what worry or the disease the bird has got right although there was nothing beside that bird that was along under the old tree and further he said that in my dream me think i went to search out what might there be found and what this sweet bird's trouble meant that thus lay fluttering on the ground i went and peered and cloud desk green no cause for her distress full cry yet for her dear lady's sake i stooped i stooped me thought the doubt to take when lo i saw a bright green snake and then he just he just uh, uh, again explaining his dream that uh, as he uh, appeared when he see went to close and he saw in a dis it was a dis stressful cry of the dove and he saw a snake right he saw a green snake i saw a bright green snake coiled round his uh, its wings and neck he saw a snake right bright green snake who coiled round the wings and neck of that dove so that's why the dove is mourning with pain right so here uh, here you just you have to got the idea uh, that it's hint or it's a symbolism right dove is this symbol as used as a symbol or, or met metaphor for crystal and uh, that of snake is for geraldine so he just feared that we can guess from this that uh, like that dove uh, crystal crystal she she um, uh, she uh, might be harmed by Geraldine, like the snake has harmed the uh, uh, or poison or harm the dove, right? So this dream indicates to that, right? And further, the bird say green as the herbs on which it couch close by doves it head is crouch and with the dow it heavens and stairs swelling its neck at she swells her eye walk it was midnight hour right he just walked from his dream right and then uh, the clock was going in the tower though my slumber was gone by the dream it would not pass away it seems to live up upon my eyes though i was awake but uh, i got uh, still the indication of that that dream right i feared that something might be wrong right and then and then i vow this self same day with music strong and saintly song to wander though the forest bear less out unholy loiter there he said that going to that forest uh, may not be um, a wise decision or a good thing because he feared he saw a dream and he was fear about that and then brassy said that the baron the while half listening heard him with a smile and turned to lady caroline right and leoline listened to this dream and he just laughed, smiled, and he turned to Geraldine. His eyes made of wonder and love, and said in a courtly accent, "Fine." So he felt love, uh, right, for Geraldine, and he said in a fine accent, "Sweet maid," to Geraldine, right, "Sweet maid, Lord Ronald, beauteous dove." Uh, and he said that you are a sweet mate, you are a beautiful dove of uh, Lord Roland, with arms more strong than harp or sing thy sire, and I will crush this snake, right? He said that, oh, no, no fear, right? If you are tough and will crush that snake or the thing that has poisoned or that had harmed you, right? And uh, so he kissed her forehead and he spake and Geraldine in maiden wise casting down her large bright eyes with blushing cheek and courtly fine she turned her uh, from sir leo line and softly cratering up her train train right her gown and that over her right arm fell again and then uh, Christabel, she was observing that and she was feeling like restless and she just feared about something gonna gonna bad right as all the things indicate the badness and folded her 
arms across her chest and crouched her head upon her breast and looked uh, and looked askan at Christabel. Right and um, the, the girl died. She folded her arms and crossed her chest, head upon the breast, and she looked uh, at the doubtful Christabel. Right, the Christabel was at doubt again. Right, Jesus Maria shielded her well. A snake's a snake's small eye blinks dark and shy, and the lady's eye they shrunk in her head. So. Uh, Christabel has observed that uh, the eyes of Geraldine are like of that of snake, right? A snake's small eyes blink dull and shy, right? Again, she got indication that that snake, that harmful creature, was Geraldine, right? And each young and uh, she was she had uh, some fear, insecurity, so she felt insecure about her own protection, Christabel. So she doubted Geraldine again as she saw her eyes like that of snake and each rung to a serpent eye and with a serpent is a snake you know and um, with somewhat of malice more of dread at Christabel she looked uh, askan doubtful suspect and one moment and the sight was fled but Christabel in dizzy trance means spell on her again she felt dizzy as uh, Geraldine again put a spell on her and stumbling on the unsteady ground shattered aloud with a hissing sound and Geraldine again turned around and like a thing that sought relief full of uh, wonder and full of grief she rolled her large bright eyes divine wildly on Sir Leoline Christabel she just uh, turned her eyes to Sir, her father Leoline and said that Christabel said that the maid alas her thoughts are gone she nothing sees no sight but one so it was um, it was the effect of that spell that her thoughts are gone and she has nothing to see no sight but one the maid means Geraldine devoid of guilt guilt is a deceit you know guilt and sin and uh, I know not how in fearful wise so deeply she had drunken in that look those shrunken serpent eyes mean serpent eyes the eyes of Geraldine that all her features were ran into this soul image in her mind so she got the image of serpent as uh, serpent she saw the Geraldine as a serpent and her image seems like a serpent in her mind and passively did a imitated that look of dull and treacherous head and thus she stood in dizzy trance and still picturing that look uh, askant with force unconscious sympathy before her father's view for 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 such a long uh, such a look could be in eyes so innocent and blue right she didn't like the fondness of her father to that of Geraldine, right? And she doubted it, and she just want uh, Leoline to let go uh, and sent away uh, Geraldine to her home. And when the trance means the spell was over, the maid paused a while. The maid means Christabel. When the spell was over when the <coughs> effect of spell was over the maid the crystal pause of a while and english she prayed she said that then falling at the baron's feet and by my mother's soul do i entreat right she said that by my mother's soul i request you to let go Geraldine to her home thou this woman sent away sent Geraldine away right Christabel she said and more she could not say for what she knew she could not tell and master by mighty spell so she was under spell then she could not uh, tell her father that uh, uh, Geraldine was something a witch like right she has put spell on her right she just request her father to just send away Geraldine, why is thy cheek so vain and vile, right? So this is a narrator addressed to Leoline. He said that the cheeks of um, the reaction here, the reaction of Leoline, his cheeks got vain, pale, and he was anger. Oh, why he felt anger at this request, right? So Leoline, so Leoline, 
thy only child lies at thy feet the joy and pride so fair innocent so wild uh, so mild the same for whom the lady died or by the pangs of her dear mother right uh, christabel uh, line he said uh, the narrator addressed to leoline said that oh your only daughter your lovely daughter your child she is on your feet right and she is requesting you and uh, you 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 why you felt angry at her why it seemed offensive to you right on such a request right and then think the evil of thy child do not think evil of your child just uh, think positive and good for your child and for her and the and just think uh, goodness of uh, her of your just beloved daughter and yourself and of the others she prayed the moment she or she said means before she said that prayed that the babe means the baby for whom she died means uh, for the sake of mother right it was a time when uh, christopher was born as a baby and at that time her mother died so babe for whom she died for the sake of that mother please let her go send her away christopher just demanded might prove her dear lord's joy and pride so it did hurt and offended the lord right that poor deadly pangs big you sell your line and then wouldn't thou wrong thy only child her child and thine right <clears throat> and then within the baron's heart and brain if thoughts like these may share they only swell his rage right he was in rage pain and did but work confused confusion there his heart was cleft with pain and rage he was rage about this offensive act actually it was not an offensive act right he but he felt that it was an offensive act of uh, uh, his child to to just uh, uh, request him to send away or to just what we say disobey the order of her father right uh, her father decision of sending brassy to ronald and the ronald came and take away geraldine he has to wait right uh, and then <coughs> his cheeks and quirt and his eyes were well dishonored uh, thus in old age right he was dishonored by his child that want to caroline to take away this seems offensive and dishonored and disobey so that's why he was enraged dishonored by his only child and all this um, hospitality to the wrong daughter of his friend to more than a woman jealousy he, he just felt that um Christabel was jealous of Gerald and that's why she demands to send her away and both thus to a graceful and her roll his eyes with stern regard upon the gentle minstrel bard and said in tone abrupt and austere why brassy thou thought lighter there lighter means wandering there he said to brassy oh i command you to go to ronald and why you are still wandering here right i bet the hands i order you to go away at once and the bard obey this command and turning from his sweet mate and the aged knight surly or line let for the lady geraldine now this is conclusion to part two and it goes like this a little child a limber elf singing dancing to itself a fairy thing with red round cheeks that always find and never seeks he just um and real line he remember the childhood of christabel that how uh, the little child christabel right how beautiful she was in childhood singing dancing fairy thing roundness her cheeks and um, so makes such a vision to this side and fills the father's eyes with light so these memories just felt his uh, eyes with uh, light right and then and the pleasures flow in so thick and fast so he felt pleasure about that past remembering that past and memories recollect the memories and fast upon his heart and then that he at last must uh, need express his love 
excess with words of unmeant bitterness he he felt like that uh, that the love for uh, christopal that was a childhood was not uh, felt at that instant right now right these are the final lines and perhaps it is pretty to force together thoughts uh, so all unlike each other to mutter and mock a broken charm right it was due to the spell or the charm right and uh, such things take place right and dali dali is an actor who moves slowly to dali with wrong to dali with wrong that does no harm perhaps this tender too and pretty tender means kindness it was act of kindness and pretty at each wild word means bitter word to feel within he just feel bitterness within for christopher a sweet recoil of love and piety and that feeling didn't last now and that in a world of sin this world of sin sorrow and shame should be true such giddiness such silliness and foolishness of heart and brain comes seldom self from the rage and pain he was in rage and pain too and so talks it most used to do so here you can see that this story ends abruptly right without any conclusion that what happens to Geraldine what actually her character is and you have to guess for yourself right so this is an unfinished work as i already told you and this ends like this abruptly so uh, in another video i'll make a critical analysis of this poem as well so stay tuned with my channel thank you for watching